Hey besties, welcome back to my channel. I feel like this is a very cute and cozy setup we have going on. If you ignore my dead plants and the washing basket. Um, <laughs> also, the sweater, I can't tell if it's cute. It's definitely cozy, but I can't tell if it's cute. Anyway, the month has ended. The month? October. October has ended, so it's time for my October reading wrap up. This is my second coffee of the day. It's far too late to be having a second coffee. Let alone a first coffee. Mm, it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure in October I read 14 books, which is pretty good. It's not like the best reading month I've ever had in my life, but 14 books is pretty decent, especially considering the reading slump that I was in for, I would say, most of October. I would say it wasn't like the best reading month, though, in general, partly because of the reading slump, but also just in terms of the books that I read. There were some that I really loved, standouts in my head that I can just immediately think of, uh, but others definitely definitely just were not good. I mostly read ebooks, but I quickly just want to mention two physical books that I read. Technically reread. I did a reading vlog where I reread some romances just on like a really lazy weekend. And so the two romances I read reread were The Love Hypothesis by Ellie Hazelwood. This is a grumpy sunshine fake dating romance. Super super cute. Highly recommend this. I've only rated this four stars. I realized um when I was like editing my vlog where I reread this that this isn't actually technically a five star read for me. Like I do not think that this is the best romance book out there but definitely if you want something easy and fluffy to pick up and just brighten your day this will do it for you. It is just so simple and sweet. And then also in that video I read The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armes. This is just I feel like I've talked about this book in like every single book video that I've done since I read it because it's just that good. This is just just so how many times can I say that this book is good too many and yet also not enough this is also a fake dating romance but set in a workplace setting both of these books are single POV they both are told from the female main character's point of view but uh, in October Ellie Hazelwood released a like bonus chapter of the love hypothesis from Adam's point of view and when she released that, Elena said that she was going to do the same thing when Aaron's POV chapter comes out, is released. I will simply cease to exist. It's going to be so good. Anyway, just really wanted to quickly mention both of these. Most of the other books that I read in October were uh, ebooks, except for those two books here, but we'll talk about those later. And I think most of the books that I read as ebooks were on Kindle Unlimited. Amazing. The first book that I read was, I would say, probably the worst book that I read in October as well, and that was Inevitable by Shane Rose. This is a best friends, older brothers romance, and there's also kind of like the, like a famous aspect to it, the, the best friends, whole family are very rich and very famous, and in particular the love interest, the best friends, older brother, is like a famous singer. I gave this one star simply, I just did not, this was just not the kind of romance that I was looking for or that I have been really enjoying lately. I could definitely see people liking this. This is like a very intense dramatic romance. Uh, the story starts where both of our main characters go through like quite a heavy traumatic event and because of that they obviously become really really close after that and so if you're looking for a relationship where there are a lot of really serious topics and a lot of very heavy emotions this will totally do it for you. I could see what Shane Rose was like trying to do with this it just like I just wasn't looking for this romance at the time. Sad to say that the month started with such a bad read like a one-star romance that was a bit rough but that's okay we quickly moved on to bigger and better things. The second book I read was Black Sunshine by Karina Hale and I don't know if I've read any of Karina Hale's other books because turns out she's written a whole lot of romance books. I was kind of like looking over her backlist very very briefly. She has written so many different kinds of romance books. Her backlist is insane to me but this is a paranormal vampire romance and I loved this. I love a good paranormal vampire romance. Fully gave this five stars. If you notice a slight change in the camera angle, no you didn't. But anyway, Black Sunshine follows Lenore who is turning 21 and on her 21st birthday essentially finds out that she's a vampire and she finds out because she gets kidnapped by some creepy guy who she thinks is like a stalker but turns out he is a like a very old and very powerful vampire and he's been keeping an eye on her for a while because he has known that she's going to be turning into a vampire soon and I mean 
there are other reasons besides that but those are major plot spoilers so let's not talk about those and i simply just loved everything about this i loved both of the characters i loved the plot i thought the romance was very well developed and i think karina hale ha like has a really great paranormal writing style super atmospheric very gothic very dark very creepy i honestly kind of wish i had read this more towards the end of october like closer to halloween i really love this i really i'm i have the sequel in my kindle unlimited library this can be read as a standalone but definitely when you read it there you can like you can tell that there's more to the story and so there is a second book and also there are two characters mentioned in black sunshine that are getting their own book released sometime soon i think before the end of this year or it might be early next year and i think i'll pick that up as well i just i really enjoyed this and now i'm really interested to check out karina hale's other books as well and then i read not my type by evie mitchell this was a new release and this was a just super short sweet fun romance. So is Frankie who is a sexologist and she runs a podcast. One of her listeners asks her to do an episode on rope play but Frankie knows nothing about it so she gets in contact with someone who does know about it and that's where we meet our love interest. I definitely don't think this was like the best romance that I ever read. I gave this four stars because it was super fun and super sweet but I'm like I'm not the biggest fan of shorter stories so I did find it hard I think to really get invested in this but I believe this is the first in the series and I'm I'm interested in picking up the other books like I really enjoyed this. I think Evie Mitchell has a super engaging writing style. I would definitely recommend this if you just have like an afternoon and you want to just read something fun and easy. Would definitely recommend this. Oh my god I don't even remember remember what this book was about. Uh-oh, that means it was really bad. Let me just see. Next I read When We Were Reckless by Emery Rose and I gave this two stars. Listen, I can barely remember what this is about but I'm pretty sure this is kind of like an age gap romance. Again, brother's best friend romance, not best friend's brother brother's best friend. This follows Quinn who is essentially just finished high school. I'm pretty sure the story starts like at her high school graduation and Quinn is super excited to leave home, go to university. She's like planning on going to a university far away from her like quiet country town. She definitely feels like she's been very sheltered growing up and we find out kind of very quickly on in the book it's because she's had some very serious health scares like growing up so her family very protective of her makes sense understandable but she's kind of just ready to grow up and you know go out on her own. Things get a little bit complicated when her brother's best friend Jesse comes home for the summer and Jesse has just quit his career. He's like a famous motocross rider or something like that and he's basically just reached his lowest point. He's quit his job, he's ended his motocross career, he doesn't really know what he's gonna do. His fiance or girlfriend, like they've just ended things. Things are not looking good for Jesse. And I think the thing that I didn't like about this romance was Quinn had very much been in love with Jesse, like her whole life, childhood crush kind of thing, and Jesse never looked once at Quinn, except I think they there is like they shared a kiss like once, something like that but it very much feels like Jesse only decides to give Quinn a chance this summer because his life is already so horrible that he is like not afraid to make another mistake. It very much felt like he didn't really think of Quinn as anything serious and like he kind of almost thought that their relationship was going to be bad. Obviously that's not the case, like they both end up falling in love, it's a romance, but it was just uh, like the, the dynamic was uncomfortable, I didn't see the connection, there was no chemistry between them. I fully picked this up because someone posted a screenshot on TikTok of one of the pages and it seemed really really sweet and I was interested in it, this was bad. I honestly wish I had DNF'd this. Two stars, entirely forgettable. I swear the camera has changed like 10 times in this video already, I'm so sorry. The next book I read was interesting and that was Broken Bonds by Jay Bree and this is a reverse harem I think Omegaverse fantasy romance book and I only gave this three stars because this is the first in a series and definitely this book was just like a lot of setup and I think I am going to pick up the second book because it feels like this series has potential to be like a lot of fun. I really liked the world building in this, very interesting. We didn't learn a whole lot about it in this first book. Again, as I said, this felt like a lot of build up, 
a lot of potential was seen in this but I definitely think I need to read the second book to get like kind of a little bit more and really decide my feelings on this but basically our main character Ollie we get introduced to the story and we find out that she has been on the run from her bonds now bonds from what i understand are like almost kind of like arranged relationships and i'm pretty sure that is like a link to the kind of omegaverse setting of this world and i mean there are kind of like there seems to be a hierarchy between the people with different powers and stuff in this universe but that like there's not enough told in this story for me to actually say now this is an Omegaverse story, but basically we follow Ollie as she is kind of like rediscovered, captured, found, and she's like reunited with her bonds. Even though they haven't technically met, they know who each other are, but obviously she's been on the run so they kind of meet for the first time and they definitely want to make sure that she won't run away again. So there are five guys who are kind of paired up with this one girl, Ollie basically goes to university and we see her getting to know these guys a little bit. We honestly don't get to get don't get to get to know them. We don't get to know these guys as well as I would have liked. Again, just a lot of potential in this first story. I'm interested in picking up the second book because something I really loved about this was, as I mentioned, there seems to be a kind of hierarchy between the different people with different powers. And so it's said at the very start of the book that Ollie's bonds, the five guys that she's with, are all really, really powerful. They're definitely like up there in the hierarchy. But at the end of the book, we get told that Ollie is like even more powerful than these guys and that she is like potentially one of the most powerful people like in this universe, which is really cool uh, for a lot of the book we see Ollie she's like suppressing her powers we don't really get told why we just get told it's a bad thing and it's probably because she's so powerful and I'm really hoping that in the following books I don't know if this is a duology or a trilogy or what I'm really hoping we kind of see Ollie lose her shit a little bit and just like let go unleash her powers really step into her full potential I would really love to see that so yeah this was interesting I don't like really have much to say about this book I feel like I would have more to say about the series once I've read it all an intriguing first book We'll say. Next I read potentially my favorite book uh, that I read in October and this actually like was so surprising to me because this is the second book in a trilogy and I read the first book and the third book back in I think September maybe August and I just didn't pick up the second book I don't know why I didn't think it was going to be good or something like that I really hadn't heard anyone talking about the second book as much as the first and the third one the book in question Madis Obsession by Daniela Laurie this was just everything that I could ever want in an enemies to lovers romance. I'm not a huge enemies to lovers fan. It's not my favorite trope, but this was so good. Also a really, really great mafia romance as well. Oh my goodness. And also I just want to say this now, the only romance book that I have found yet that I have not only like not hated, but loved with cheating involved. Cheating is just like something that I just like I cannot get behind in a fictional scenario or like not. I just like I cannot. But in this book we have our main character Gianna and we see that she is in this kind of arranged marriage to a much older guy and we see that Gianna genuinely does um care for this guy but it's very obvious that their relationship is like horrible, super toxic and I, I don't think she cheats on him her first husband dies and then she ends up getting remarried to somebody else who's also like really old and it's also like an arranged marriage and i'm pretty sure she ends up cheating on the second husband you know what i'm okay with it because first of all i mean they're both old and skeezy and gross and treat her terribly and two gianna didn't have a say in like either of these marriages she obviously tries to make the best of her situation but like i just there's obviously like it's not like a real relationship mm you know what i mean so when gianna kind of cheats on her husband by getting with christian who is a hot fbi agent who basically gets gianna out of jail one time he works with like the mafia that she's involved in it's good it's good it's hot they have this really great kind of friction really great banter that turns into a really great chemistry christian is like super oh my god stereotypical possessive kind of alpha male he's like super anal about everything and he hates how Rick and messy Gianna is but they just work together they work together so well and this book was just everything to me their relationship was everything the maddest obsession I'm obsessed honestly can't believe I didn't read this when I read the first and the third book a few months ago 
so glad that I decided to though because otherwise I would have missed out on a five star read. I gave this five stars. I loved it. And then a little bit later towards the end of the month, like a few days ago, I read A Lady of Rixgrove Manor. Rixgrove? Rixgrave. Rixgrave, I think. And this is by Catherine Moon who I read two of her books earlier this year which I loved so much and I loved this too. I genuinely think Catherine Moon might be one of my new favorite indie romance authors. This was a really great October read. And this is a reverse harem monster romance. This follows Esther who is a maid and she's losing her job when she meets a doctor who basically offers her a position at Rooksgrave Manor which is a manor that tends to the needs of monsters. We find out that there are a bunch of these houses around kind of the world but specifically at Rooksgrave there is a witch who pairs up the woman like she specifically only takes women into her house and she pairs all these women up with monster men. We see at the end of the book that uh, the, the witch who kind of runs this manor is talking about you know expanding this kind of dynamic not keeping it so strict like between women and men you know. So Esther our main character our maid she decides to take this job at Rooksgrave Manor. She loves having sex and the doctor who finds her is a monster and he kind of you know gives her a little taste of what life at Rooksgrave Manor could be like for her. And she accepts and basically she gets paired up with uh, four other monsters as well as the doctor. So five in total. She has her five monster men and it's basically just their romance story. The dynamics in her reverse harems are so sweet and lovely. Absolutely adore her. And this was just so fun and so filthy. Oh my, possibly like this was possibly the filthiest book I've ever read in my life and I enjoyed every second of it. Like I did, I just like really loved this. So much that I gave it five stars. And then I want to talk about five maybe six other books that i read specifically for a readathon so basically over october my friends and i hosted a spooky but sexy readathon this is a readathon that we created it's really just for fun because none of us are really into you know super spooky like thriller horror type books but we wanted to do something in honor of halloween spooky month so we came up with a spooky but sexy readathon this year we had a bunch of prompts and i didn't complete all of them but i read a bunch of books and i did vlog for this readathon but unfortunately my phone has been acting up and like all of my video files got corrupted so unfortunately i was not able to upload my vlog but we can talk about all the books that I read now. One of the prompts we had was to read like shorter stories so let's talk about those very quickly. I read Feed and Skin by Evita Weiss and these both follow two different like paranormal couples and they're shorter stories that are almost like prologues to longer stories that follow the same couples but like you know they have their longer romance story and I do think I'm gonna go and pick up the longer stories because I really liked these shorter smutty like preview. Feed follows a succubus and a fae kind of like enemies to lovers workplace almost and basically this just follows one really steamy night between the two of them. It was really really good and kind of like same with the second one Skin. Um, This followed a banshee and a gargoyle who work together but the gargoyle is kind of more of like a bodyguard detective type of figure because the work that the banshee does is like quite dangerous and they also have like one really hot night together and so obviously both of these were really hot but they were also surprisingly really emotional as well. I really liked the depth that we got in like such a short amount of time and the characters in the relationship I thought that was, I was like so well done. I was just so impressed by this. The writing, great. Uh, I think both of these had queer representation. Sexy, sweet, queer. What more could you ask for really? I gave both of these four stars I think simply because I feel like I will give the longer stories of both of the couples five stars but I really enjoyed these. Both available on Kindle Unlimited. Then I read Night Pleasures by Sherilyn Kenyon and this is a this was a vampire paranormal romance. Follows a seemingly average woman Amanda who we see comes from a very eccentric family by eccentric family i mean i'm pretty sure all of her family are witches of some kind and we see amanda is very much like not interested in that sort of lifestyle in particular amanda's twin sister is into vampire hunting and i mean her whole family are witches but they don't believe in vampires which is hilarious to me because vampires are very much real basically amanda one day gets mistaken for her vampire hunting twin gets captured and changed to a vampire. His name is Kyrian. Obviously he is the love interest as they are chained together for a time and get to know each other a little bit. They help each other out to escape and you know whatever. And there's a whole 
plot to this to do with like demons and saving the world and stuff like that but it was really hard to focus on that when Amanda and Kieran were just so horny for each other it was honestly like slightly uncomfortable and I say this as someone I swear every time I say the word horny the police siren sound I say this as someone who has read a lot of explicit NSFW smutty type of content the relationship in this just felt like so out of place and unnecessary I didn't hate this this is very like classic early 2000s paranormal romance kind of cringy writing a lot of like witty sarcastic one-liners amanda just wants to be average she doesn't really want like anything extraordinary to happen in her life and then she meets a dark and brooding very much not average person vampire and they fall in love no i don't know this was just like not great it was kind of fun to read at the time i didn't hate my time reading this it was just not memorable and uh definitely have read better paranormal romance i will say this was very funny to read if you know the kind of book drama around this series and the shadow hunter series if you don't know cassandra clare who wrote the shadow hunter series uh got taken to court for plagiarizing this series which as someone who has read the shadow hunter books finds this absolutely hilarious because there are so many differences between these like basic maybe basic core concepts absolutely but that would be like stephanie meyer taking anyone who wrote a vampire story to court it was it was quite amusing to read that with that knowledge in mind but otherwise this was just fine i gave this three stars then i went ahead and i reread a favorite vampire romance of mine dark lover by jr ward this isn't my favorite vampire romance this is the first in like a 20 book series the black decker brotherhood series but i love the series so rereading the first book was super super fun i had a great time rereading this this is kind of similar to, what was the other book black sunshine kind of similar to black sunshine in the sense that we follow beth who is a human except she's not a human she kind of finds out very suddenly that she is going to turn into a vampire and she finds out because her dad asked a favor of the vampire king for the vampire king to help beth through her transition into a vampire and the vampire king wrath originally said no but then beth's dad dies not a spoiler this literally happens in the very first chapter of the book but because beth's dad dies wrath feels like he kind of has to uphold like the last request that he was given by this guy so he agrees to help Beth through well I mean he doesn't agree he decides to help Beth through her transition uh he kind of stalks her for a little bit I mean it's not really hard to stalk her he finds her pretty easily obviously because her dad told him where to find her but it takes a while for them to kind of you know strike up a relationship it's not necessarily like an enemies to lovers but beth is very much i mean obviously this big hulking guy just randomly starts showing up in your life it's a she's a little bit concerned and she doesn't totally love wrath straight away they do definitely have that kind of like instant chemistry attraction the whole one of like the biggest parts of the black decker brotherhood series is like people finding their one you know faded soulmate which personally i really love as a paranormal trope and i don't think it's done in a terrible way in this series so they do have that kind of like instant attraction but they do kind of fight it a little bit and obviously there's complications because beth is turning into a vampire coming to terms with the fact that she's not a human um i just love this i think that there is a book in the series probably for everyone i love the vampire lore in this series and i'm really glad that i got to reread the first one i kind of want to reread the whole series it took me like a year to read all like 18 books but i don't care i want to reread these so bad because i love them so much and then we're going to talk about these two books here these two books um oh that's the second one uh kingdom of the wicked and kingdom of the cursed by carrie maniscalco listen this is a ya paranormal fantasy uh obviously only two books out so far i think there's a third one coming the second book kingdom of the cursed just came out i had only heard good things about this series so i was excited to pick these up i haven't read any ya in a really long time so i was really hoping that this was going to be good unfortunately was very disappointed because i just this was really bad i ended up of giving kingdom of the wicked two stars i haven't finished kingdom of the cursed yet technically i dnf'd it for the readathon i think i might finish this just because i hate leaving books unfinished but it will not be a fun time i i can just i i can already tell the first book 
though why don't we talk about that briefly we follow amelia as she basically has to grapple with the death of her twin sister and her twin sister's death leads her kind of down a dark dangerous path her whole family are witches and she kind of wants to get revenge for her sister and her sister's death she wants to like find the killer and we don't really know what she wants to do once she finds the killer she's she's just angry and she wants answers so she ends up summoning a prince of hell uh and things kind of get complicated from that point on but basically her and this prince of hell wrath team up to try and solve this mystery turns out amelia's sister is not the only young witch who has died so they're kind of trying to figure out who's going around killing all of these young witches there are curses to break magic to you know fight and break free of and i just oh my god don't really feel like i can tell you what these books are about because this book was so messy this first book so messy i mean what i read of the second one i don't think it's going to get any better but uh this one was just like this book was just so messy i couldn't stand amelia i hated her with a passion she is just so dumb and i just hated reading from her point of view and i also didn't really like wrath either apparently he's kind of this is meant to be like an enemies to love a situation but i didn't, couldn't see why amelia hated wrath other than the fact that he is from hell and i didn't care for the murder mystery plot which is like 90 percent of what this book is so didn't like 90 percent of this plot and i also really didn't like carrie miniscalco's writing every single page is just a repeat of the page before and everything is told to you in this book there is no like visual storytelling in this like there are you know there's like atmosphere and you know there are descriptions of places and people and things like that but all of the important events that happen we are just told all of the important feelings that happen that amelia feels you know are going through after her sister's death we're just told over and over amelia is sad about her sister dying she's angry and she wants revenge there is no we just it just was like so like juvenile in the worst way and i just really could not be enchanted by this even though i kind of wanted to like it's uh, like it's a cool concept obviously i thought it sounded kind of cool i bought the book this one and the second one i thought i was going to like this i gave this two stars it wasn't the worst thing that i read in october but it was definitely it, it was close it was close to being the worst and i mean obviously i've started this and i now i feel like i have to finish it even though that's like the last thing i want to do people have said i've heard that this book is better though so i don't really want to talk about it if i do read it on my channel so you can follow my goodreads and see my review there so that really sucked that i picked those up that i even bought those um but don't worry the last book that i read for this readathon and the last book that i read in october was a five star read now i don't think it it's the best book that has ever been published but I had so much fun reading it and that is A Shadow in the Embers by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Now this is the first book I think in a new series but this is like a prequel to her Blood and Ash series and I think I even like this a little bit more than Blood and Ash from Blood and Ash. Like the Blood and Ash series is fun and it's definitely what I would consider like a guilty read. I don't think Jennifer L. Armachat is like the best person or the best writer. There is a lot of speculation that none of these books from the from Blood and Ash series are books that she's actually written. Everyone's pretty sure that it's a different ghostwriter every single time but they are just so perfectly formulaic that they are just so easy for me to consume. They have like all my favorite tropes favorite type of supernatural creatures we're getting like introduced to some really cool god type characters so there's a really cool kind of magical religious aspect to it in the blood and ash series there's kind of like a soulmate aspect to it which i love shadow and the embers obviously the start of a new series is a prequel we follow different characters and this is kind of a haters and persephone-esque story we follow seraphina who essentially uh is raised knowing that when she becomes of age she's going to be sent off to marry the god of death but not only is she going to be married to the god of death she's brought up with the intentions of making him fall in love with her and then killing him basically there is a curse on her land and her family thinks that the way to like break the curse is for her to kill the god of death and obviously they have this chance because she's been promised to him by her father her king the father so her king the father her father the king so the story starts we see seraphina as she comes of age and she's waiting to meet the god of death and be taken away to hell or whatever and he shows up and essentially turns her down he just says that he doesn't need a consort and he just leaves her there and from that day onward everyone 
in the universe seems to hate Serafina. Her parents hate her, her siblings hate her, well, her stepsister likes her, but everyone else hates her. Because she was promised to the god of death at such a young age, she was brought up very isolated, very sheltered, only a few people actually know that she, like, she's, she even exists. And things only get worse as the years go on, as her land suffers more and more from this curse, until essentially things get so bad for her that the god of death ends up interfering. He ends up coming back and deciding to finally like claim her as his consort and take her back with him to hell. Turns out that Seraphina has actually met the god of death multiple times as she's like gotten older and she has known him as a man named Ash. They kind of have a very established grumpy sunshine trope but uh Seraphina is definitely the grumpy one. Obviously Ash is like the god of death but he's very sweet and happy whenever he's around Seraphina. It's I I love the reversal of the grumpy sunshine trope. Like I just think this was really cool. There were dragons in this but sh isn't really included in the Blood and Ash series so I loved that and I honestly really am invested in this series I think more than the Blood and Ash series. I really couldn't tell you what did it for me but this was just so good. I enjoyed every single second reading this and I gave it five stars because I loved it so much. Like this was definitely just a fun read, a great and like easy way to end my month of reading. But those were all the books that I read. I think I definitely read more than 14. I don't think 14 was the right number. I think I'm missing some of the books in my book log. But I read a decent amount. It wasn't the best reading month, but it wasn't the worst. I found some five-star reads, which is always just really great. And I kind of feel like October is going to be like the last month of like fun reading that I get to do. The Spooky Bus 60 Readathon was fun. I was kind of trying to read like fun paranormal romances for October. Uh, but everything that I'm reading over November and December, I kind of already have planned out. And I'm not saying that it's not fun. I'm definitely excited to read the books that I have planned, but this definitely, this I feel like this is the last month I had to be a little bit spontaneous with my reading. So I would say I had a pretty good month. I'd love to hear what you guys read in October if you found any new favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys next month with another wrap up, but also sometime soon with another video. Bye!